Outside of 70 points being scored in a game, the Cowboys was the biggest upset that we saw. Yeah. Um, so you looked at the, the Cowboys D and the Cardinals offense. And I think, you know, and I've read your notes here, the curse of handwriting too. You gave some some props to the Cardinals offense and, and what they did. Yeah, the coaching the game. staff, right. Because I was thinking maybe this is all just like, wow, the Cowboys really screwed this uh, up. But like we're asleep at the wheel or something ex- like that. Exactly, right? but I guess that wasn't totally the case. No, it definitely was not the case. So what we've seen in three weeks in a row from Arizona is the, the game plans are, are pretty damn good, right, on both sides of the ball. I mean, Jonathan Gannon and what they got going on that side of the ball as far as defense, you know, Nick Rallis, the defensive coordinator there, I, I like what they do offensively. Listen, there's still more you want from the quarterback and Dobbs, but there's two things that you know he's done a pretty good job of. He takes care of the football. He does. He keeps them out of bad situations for the most part, and you know can run a little bit. That helps out. Design run or scramble. All right, and then for the most part, he's being efficient in the pass game. Are there a few plays that I go, ooh, man, if they had another quarterback there that he could throw that in there, or that's a big play? Sure. So, But nonetheless, he's doing a good job. But a little bit like we're going to talk about a little in the Miami Dolphins game here in a minute is, you know, Drew Petzing, what he does on the offensive side of the ball, yeah, yeah, they kind of brought the fight to the Cowboys, to like what you're saying, and, and, and it wasn't just, you know, the Cowboys asleep at the wheel, but they – they truly schematically gave them issues with some of the formations and things they did and the movement and motion that we talk about so much right now that you see any really good offense in football. You know, we saw a graphic yesterday, and we'll hit on that, I think, later, of how the good offenses move people. That, that's, they, they create advantage. They create miscommunication on the other side of the ball, right? They create defenses going, whoa, wait, we didn't study for that shift, and now they're in another formation and have done something, and we haven't gone over how we're supposed to adjust to that yet. Can we go over to the sideline and talk to the coach, right? So they, without me getting too in the weeds, caused some problems with these formations and motions to where – some of these run plays we saw, right, and and you know whether it was O'Connor, uh, I mean, or James Connor, or um, or, or Dobbs, I, I would sit back and go, oh wow, okay, that was a good run, right? And then you know me, I'm sitting there watching the film and I'm going, wait, I mean, they really got them here, like they don't have enough people for the gaps, like they they've exposed them with the motion and then the how the Cowboys were shifting. They didn't on some of these runs. There's no way they could have stopped it. It was going to take somebody to do something miraculous. But like mm-hmm. schematically X's and O's on a chalkboard type of thing, you'd go, no, there's nobody here for this gap. Or no, you've shifted the linebacker so far over that now the center and the guard can block one guy and then the other guy can go up and cut the linebacker off from getting to the weak side run, right? So and that was really kind of the overall theme of the football game more than anything and why yeah. we saw this really good Dallas Cowboy defense um, get gashed, especially in the run game. The yeah. pass game was just about being efficient, and and you know they did smart things there. But the run game is really where you know they they made their bread and butter. Yeah, early on you had Dobbs with that forty four yard run. It was just a read option off of Micah Parsons, Micah, which is what we saw the yes, Eagles right. do to them last year. Exactly and some other teams right. do to them last year. They it's, knew how to block all that movement up front, right? They had a beat on. Wait, if we line up like this, they'll slant this way, right? So they were very well coached. Okay, and kind of having a feel for like what they do at certain formations and how they slant and you know slant and stunt. Right? We talk about the Cowboys all the time. This is our first game too. You come back and you go. The Cowboys still have a size issue up front. They do. Mozzie Smith does not pop at all. Jonathan Hankins has not popped at all, and he was dominated. So they got some of their big people there got to be better, or they got to get more big people, but that's certainly going to be something they're going to be worried about as we go in here. And then their linebackers were very undisciplined on top of that. You noted something on the edge. Yeah. No edge setters. No edge setters. No edge setters. For the Cowboys. Explain what that is. Well, like – more on just about every defensive scheme in football, there's a guy that's like, wait, you're nobody can go outside of you. You have to make sure you force it back inside, right? And what they did, and this is again, this is a Shanahan ish, of course, Mike McDaniel ish, and we're going to get into that too, to where they, with these formations and some of these shifts and motions, changed the burden on who was going to be the edge guy, mm. right? And Or the edge guy who thinks, wait, I got the edge, 
now you got a guy outside of you. Like they shifted. You you got like the coach has got to tell you to move out so you can still be the edge guy, right? You know, th- there was too much of that. I mean, blocked by tight splits. Got you know the tight end, two tight ends, and okay, now I'm on the edge. But the two tight ends come over, and now they can just block me down, and I'm supposed to set the edge. And now who's there to do the edge? The corner, corner. right? And every offense is trying to make the corner the main guy that has to tackle somebody in the run game. So that was really where they dropped the ball. Let alone, you know, like I said, Vander Esch, uh, not very good in the middle. Clark, 33, way too over aggressive and still young and, you know, green between the ears there a little bit or, you know, as far as his ways. And th- th- those were, you know, some of the things that really, really hurt them, let alone some splash plays here and there in the past game that, that helped them, uh, especially that last one with Michael Wilson from Stanford, a guy we talked about in the draft coming oh, out. Oh, yeah, that, that play too. That yeah. just seemed like a blown coverage on that long 70-yard pass play. I don't know exactly what happened on that play, but – Someone didn't have the right yeah, um, communication. Gosh, damn, what, what the hell happened on so that it was play? Like, yeah. I, it was almost yeah. like I, I looked at it yeah, here, yeah. too. I, it was like, I don't know if Stephon Gilmore thought it was man-to-man or something like that. And I, I don't know. Or it was man-to-man and Malik Hooker God, didn't you know cover what? him. I'm, I'm blanking, I I'm blanking I've, out I've on taken that play. You, I've taken you down a rabbit you're, hole you're, right I, now. I, I, no, well, I can't, for some reason, I can't remember the specifics of why or how that went down there. And I'm, I'm going to pull it up as we sit here just because I'm going, wait. What the heck did happen there? What am I missing here? So I'm going to get to it. I'm it was sorry. It's kind of like a ceiling play. You know, it was like one of those plays where you're like, all right, maybe it's a five point game. I think it was a five point game it at was. That, it, that point. It definitely was. It was, was, uh, it was It was. third quarter, right? I think, I believe, I want to say that play kind of happened at somewhere in that. It was late. That. It might have been the fourth quarter. Was even. it the fourth quarter? Yeah. I don't know. All right. Either Look, way. This is what we've done. Yeah. Quarter qu- four, quarter Pete four. says. Right. 928. Oh, so it was kind of like a seal the deal. It was. It was thing. it was the wait, here they come Dallas, they're going to make this a game. Mm-hmm. And of course that didn't happen. So, here we go. I got it now. Here we go. I, I'm sorry everybody. Navigated through a whole game film. Boom, here we go. In a matter of 38 seconds. Well, so here it is. And and it is it's tough. It looks like it's a zone coverage, okay? And Gilmore doesn't come off of his guy he thought and it was pass man it off and yes. he's playing man. Exactly right. right. Yes. So, good job by you there. Yeah, that's got to be passed off. But they got them messed up all together. Again, with the formation and motion here, mm. like they're in a tough spot to where it's like somebody was going to be open. There was no way they were going to cover it, and that goes back to the point we've kind of talked about here with some of these shifts and motions. It really messed up the Cowboys, and how do they want to adjust and, and be sound on that side of the ball? Why wouldn't more teams do that? They, they just can't coach it. They're not confident in getting the guys in the right. I mean, it just seems like such a, a wasted uh, – thing yeah, if you don't another, shift and yeah. move guys pre-snap I I you know I think a lot of it is it is hard it adds verbiage mm-hmm. right it's it's more in the free agency era of like wait these guys are you know they just got here we don't have time to do that and then I think a lot of them like there's some teams that do it a lot of them don't know why they do it either mm-hmm. They don't really understand it. They're not really grasping it. They're going, oh, whoa, that, that's cool shift in formation. You'll see somebody steal it the next week, and it's going, yeah, but they had a reason for it. Like, they noticed on film that they did this when they did these shifts and motions, and it caused these problems. And, yeah, so few, like our point we talk about, really understand defensive rules like some of these good offensive coordinators do to where they can, you know, take advantage of it and stress it that way. All right, so bottom line with the Cowboys' defense. Yeah was this is uh, something that was now exposed. I mean, I, we've, we've said this for a while, and you've said this for yeah. a while. Like, they're fast. They're a fast defense. They're not big. You were yeah. underwhelmed by their defensive tackles against the, the run, as you mentioned. Definitely right. And so then, you this, know, is a way, this is a way to beat the Cowboys' defense. It, it definitely is. Well, it's definitely something they're going to get tested with now. People are going to do this. And, I mean, of course, they're, they're, they want to run the football. Uh, on the Cowboys anyways, but yeah, the, the, now the let's test how they line up. If they can figure out what they're doing and adjust properly to some of these shifts and formations, they're going to be tested on that. And that's where they're, that's where a Monday walkthrough, you go over the things you messed up to go, wait, Hey guys, we got to fix this right now because the teams are going to do this until we show we we did fix it. Yo, yo, thanks for watching, homies. I appreciate it. As always, the NFL season is right around the corner. So now it's your turn to hit subscribe to Chris Sims Unbutton. If you want to get all the training camp battles, preseason film review, playoff predictions, and much, much more, you know where to find it. It's right here, Chris Sims Unbutton. Please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.